Hello everyone, welcome back to the Paladin. Thank you guys for being here, I appreciate it. I don't however know what I really want to do right now. I think we head back down into Stranglethorn and we work on that Crocolis quest that we picked up, the uh, low level one that we grabbed in Booty Bay. Let's go do that. Steve, it was a really risky trip. Yeah, absolutely. Would I do that again? Uh, or on any other class? No, probably not. Not after we aggroed those level 38s and then we found out there were skull level enemies, which means they're at least 10 levels higher than us. Uh, I would not do that again. But I'm really happy that we didn't die. And it's probably going to be super useful to have the flight point to get the boat over to Ratchet if we ever want to go that way. Which we'll, we'll have to do if we want to go down into like Shimmering Flats and Tanneris later. Gladiator560, hello. Thanks for coming and hanging out with the stream. Yeah, I actually thought I had the stream scheduled like two hours ago. I thought I scheduled it. But because I'm used to putting up videos and they have to buffer, so I set them to private while they while they buffer and then I schedule them. Well, I set the I set the schedule to private. <laughs> and when you schedule a stream and you set it to private, it kind of defeats the purpose. So yeah, I had a, a private stream scheduled for myself, apparently. And I realized it about 10 minutes before the stream started. Otherwise, there would have been a lot more lead time. Besides doing these couple of quests in Stranglethorn, I, I really don't know where else we're going to go right now. We could he head back over to South Shore, but uh, we have a Murloc quest there. We have probably a follow-up to that we could do. You know what we never did, and we were so excited that nobody called me out on this that I saw, we did not spend our talent point at level 30. So, yeah. Let's go ahead and do that. I don't think it's a very exciting one. I, th I think we just keep going into Conviction. We have to get five points in it eventually. Improved Red Aura. We're not really using Red Aura. Eye for an eye. All crits against you cause 15% damage to the, to the person that crit you. I don't want to get crit, so... Yeah, we'll just go into Conviction. That's okay. Do I like the Paladin gameplay? Yes, absolutely. Mainly in Hardcore, I like it because we have so many bubbles, we have so many heals, you know, we have a lot of get out of jail free cards, as I like to call them. So yeah, that, that's our row of stuff we could pop if we're ever in trouble. And it just has a lot of survivability. Obviously the heavy armor helps. And it's, it's a safe class for Hardcore, you know, nothing is safe, everything could get killed, but... Paladin is a lot of fun. Dark Cell Gaming, welcome man. Thanks for being here, good evening to you. I appreciate you stopping by the stream. We have a turn in here, or I thought we had a turn in. Now, does this guy patrol? Maybe he patrols. Maybe that's why he's not here. Because otherwise, I am not sure. King's honor, friend. Light bless you. Hmm. Well, I, I'd love to be able to turn this one in. 
maybe it's the same guy that's supposed to be kind of on the hillside down here sometimes. Dolores, I appreciate you being here. Thanks for hanging out as much as you can. Ah, uh, is the guy over here? I, I don't see him. Wait, wait, wait. Okay, here we go. Here he is. This is him, right? How are you? Uh, I'd be better if you had a quest turn in or something. What's he? Uh, what's he waiting for? You need something? Hmm. Yeah, this is him, Private Thorson. It says so right here in the uh, objective. This is a dangerous place, he says. Yeah. Uh, I'm sure it is. Oh. <laughs> okay, uh, he, he was for real. Um, do we help with this? And, and if we help with this, would that allow us to actually turn in this quest? Oh, is he going to get killed? Okay, someone else is helping out. Because otherwise this guy is going to get killed. Hey, that's awesome. Okay, this is like the first time I've ever been able to find this guy and actually turn this one in. And then Jungle Secrets we probably can't do around? yet, but let's go ahead and grab it now so that we have it. Jessica, welcome to the stream. Thanks for being here. I love it. So many of you guys are from like distant places from me in the world. And I find that interesting. Alright, well, we're looking for Crocolisk. Here we go. The great thing is there's no competition out here for these guys. We kind of learned earlier that there's not a lot of people questing here because not a lot of people are making it to this level. We ha Hey, we have more now than earlier. There was like 8 of us earlier, now there's 20. That's cool. I'm sure that more and more people can get on as the afternoon draws out here. My puppy is snooping around my office, and uh, he's probably getting into something. I kind of have to look over and see what he's doing really quick. A uh, high likelihood I'm going to have to kick him out. I should probably like get somewhere safe if I'm going to have to do that. He's like on the other side of my rig, and I, I can't see if he's getting at cords or not. It's kind of terrifying. Brent, thanks for being here, man. I appreciate that. Thanks for coming by and hanging out in the stream. Rocking shoulder pads now? Oh yeah, we got uh, his shoulder pads? Oh yeah. Definitely. We got uh, 
Five stamina, five spirit. We got him off a vendor in South Shore, actually. So. We'll see if he wants to, like, go to sleep in my lap or hang out for a bit. But I feel like he's just gonna try to get me in trouble. He's about to be a keyboard puppy, which we don't really want in hardcore. Taxi Arcus US, they did not improve the WoW Classic graphics since 2004. Um, no, not technically, but the thing is, if you were playing in 2004, uh, you were playing on like a microwave oven, and the game just looked like hot garbage, so it looks a million times better than it looks right now, because we're like scaled up in resolution. You know, back then, at best, you were playing on like 1280, 720 resolution, so yeah, the graphics haven't changed at all, but... The game looks <laughs> and runs a lot better. Anybody who actually played it back in 2004 will know what I'm talking about. My friend had a rig where like if he looked at the sky, it would lock up the game. So he ran around like this. And he was never allowed to look at the sky ever. Because he was playing on a gateway PC that was built in like 2001. So it looks a million times better than it ever did. Yeah, you can, it would never have looked like this in 2004. On the, most, on the best rig you could build, it would never have looked anything close to how it looks right now. So, yeah, it's the same engine, but it doesn't look like it looked in 2004, my man. Absolutely not. Absolutely not. It was just bad resolution CRT monitors. <laughs> yeah, but it was still a lot of fun. It had that magic in it that it didn't really matter what it looked like, you know. Uh, I really just want to focus on the crocolis when I really think about it. Sam Fernandez, I appreciate that. Thank you. Thank you for being here and hanging out with the stream. Yeah, Gladiator, we also have the, the new water. Yeah, we wouldn't have had water like this back in 2004. Uh, water would have looked a little bit different. Water looked like this. Which doesn't look awful. And, and some people actually prefer this. But that's what you got back in 2004. You got you got water that looks like that. I mean, it still looks like water, right? But it's it's not the same. But some people tell me they prefer this. It's really not bad. Yeah, I, I never had a problem with it. But yeah, I remember when they basically added shadows to the game. It was BC at some point where they really upped like what the shadows could do and what the shadows could look like and suddenly no rig that you knew about could really run the game well. <laughs> you thought you had a PC that ran the game okay and then they're like, oh, look at all these shadows. It's like, shadows? Excuse me? No. <laughs> Let me go ahead and turn those off so I can keep playing the game without my rig melting. But I think the water happened in Cataclysm, right? We must have some kind of competition out here because we didn't kill this one over across the river. Somebody else did that. So there's there's somebody else here hunting Crocolisk. 
We only need two of the items, but it, it's not 100% drop rate, so... I should probably be fighting some cats just to grind XP while we're waiting for these guys to respawn a little bit. Taxi Arcus, you ask if I liked the WoW movie. Eh, I mean, it was uh, it was an okay action movie. If I try not to worry too much about World of Warcraft lore or WoW characters or production value or... If I try not to think about it too much, it was an okay action flick. Was it a great World of Warcraft movie? Could they have done better? I don't know. They didn't do better, so maybe that was as good as they could do. I was always confused why it wasn't like a CG movie, like from the cutscenes. Like, why is this just not full, full art development? Like, just in the in the engine that you use to make the best cinematics. That's what always confused. Why does it have to be live action? That was the part that always confused me about it. Gladiator, see you later, man. Thanks for stopping by. I appreciate it. Yeah, there's so much they could have done with it. I I just. I don't have any strong opinions about it. I didn't even watch it when it first came out though. I, I just saw what it was like and I'm like, well, I'm not like super stoked to see that. And then I think I saw it years later. Cause yeah, I was never really excited for a live action World of Warcraft. I, I would have been really into, like I said, like a, a cinematic cutscene-esque feature length movie, you know. But that's not the route they took. Yeah, it's like we know it didn't do very well at the box office because there was never even talk of ever doing another film, you know? Which is probably for the best. Miles, welcome, man. Thanks for stopping by. Yeah, we hit 30 earlier today. And we got the Booty Bay flight point. We, we did a dangerous run all the way down from here down to Booty Bay. Like, right after we hit 30, because, you know, if you're going to die, you might as well die right after you hit 30, right? And uh, we got the flight point successfully, so... Now we're up here trying to farm the Crocolisk for one of the low-level quests that we got down there. Exactly, D-Domino. It's like, it's a good fantasy movie, right? But it's like, if you just don't think about it as a WoW movie, then you can just kind of enjoy the, the action sequences and like the fun of it, but... As a WoW movie? Nah. Strictly mediocre. Pally, hardcore streamer class? Uh, I don't know. I'm not a hardcore streamer. In fact, the first time I streamed was like five or six days ago. What it is, is it gives you a lot of ways to escape danger. So it's like, it has a lot of get out of jail free cards. I, people have told me it's, it's the easy mode of hardcore. To which I say, yeah, sure, I need the easy mode. So that makes perfect sense. Yeah, I think if they did a, if they did the WoW movie now, they would definitely have used their CG department and their animators who are like in-house to do it. <laughs> and they wouldn't have went about it the way that they did. It would not be a live action film like that if they made it today, I don't think. Yeah, Rubik's it wasn't bad. You know, it was an okay fantasy action movie. And I'm sure some people really, really enjoyed it. There have definitely been worse films made. Uh, you know, that less people have enjoyed, I'm sure. The great thing about it is, as a work of fiction and a work of art, everybody gets to have their own opinion and feelings about it. And nobody's right and nobody's wrong. You say you've seen too much noble to know that the you know the you know the lore's been played with. Yeah, exactly. 
Yeah, like if you're like really big into the lore and the events and how things actually happened, you know, it, it could probably bother you a little bit more than if you're just kind of going into it with like a general idea of the characters and a general idea of uh, the story. But now when I watched it, I had not binged Noble's channel yet for hundreds of hours, you know, to devour everything I could. So like I was going into it just with the experiences I had in the games for the past 20 years, you know, which is a bit, but not as much as if you would get really deep into the lore. Yeah, Vince, you wanted, like, the CG cutscene stuff, too. Yeah, that's exactly what I would have preferred. Because at the very least, no matter what, good or bad, it, if, if it was in that style, it would have felt like World of Warcraft, right? Even if we decided that the lore had been played with, even if we decided the story wasn't great, if it had looked like that and felt like that, then we would have at least been able to say, well, you know, it felt like World of Warcraft, so... Like, when, when you have to craft physical fantasy environments in a physical space and have them look, like, realistic, convincing, and awesome, that's a lot harder, I think, than just, like, making it in your game engines that you make to do your cutscenes. Because then you get to use current assets and you can kind of remodel them and you can make it look how you really want. And you're not limited to what you can do with film. Jessica, 2020 was when I binged his channel too. I think 2020 was a time when people had a lot of time, <laughs> some of us. And uh, that was when I watched like basically all of his videos that I could. It tried, I tried to watch them in publishing order, like the order that he put them up in. But yeah, that was an interesting time that I, I spent probably way too much time just listening. Listening to Noble tell me all about the WoW lore. And you know, I've read the Chronicle books as well. But I got the Chronicle books after binging his channel. Because I was like, okay, now I have like a good foundation. Now like I'll have some context before I dig into these books. Steve, I think the strangest looking thing in that movie was the Blood Elves. Well, they weren't Blood Elves, they were High Elves, right? They show Lorthamar for a minute, and you know it's him because of, like, I think he has the eye patch, which I'm not sure if he technically should have had or not at that point in time. But yeah, the Elves looked really, really strange in, in the Warcraft movie, and I think it's because they knew they weren't going to show them a lot. So it almost feels like they just did not put a lot of work into making them look good. I don't remember seeing the Night Elves. But wasn't it just the wasn't it just high elves? Did we did we see night elves in the Warcraft movie? It was so long ago that I watched it. Or are you look talking about the night elves in Chronicle? And yeah, yeah, dark the the whole Chronicle has been retconned. That's what kind of sucks about Chronicle these days is like. I have not done a reread of Chronicle in a long time because I feel like Shadowlands and the writing that they have done in Shadowlands and even more of the recontextualization they're still doing in, in Dragonflight. I feel like it invalidates that lore, you know what I mean? It doesn't make it feel as good uh, when so much of it has just been turned on its head. Yeah, all the elves in the movie looked looked awful. And I feel like we only sh we only saw a couple of them, but they weren't good. I thought the dwarf the dwarves I thought were also questionable and we didn't see many of them either. I, I think we could fight this if we if we get a big heal off here. We have a potion if we absolutely need it. Oh, look at that. That was a nice crit. That, that's very, very helpful, actually. I don't remember the murloc. Yeah. But of course they would have to have a murloc, right?
Alexander, hello. Thanks for stopping by the stream, man. I appreciate it. Alright, so we are done with the Crocolis quest and everything else here is scary level orange. So I I think what we'll do is we'll run back up to to Duskwood. We could fly back down to Booty Bay to turn this one in. But then we kinda have to decide where in the world are we gonna go next. Maybe I, I think maybe back to South Shore. Maybe. Dark Soul, yeah, I would love to see just any kind of new content in Classic Era. And I don't know if it has to like ever invalidate BC. Yeah, we never would never go into BC, I guess. But yeah, I'd like to see new content added to existing zones first. And then I'd like to see new zones. Like just new max level zones. I don't want to see a level cap increase ever or anything like that. I'd love for new leveling zones to be added or like repurposed, like places like Azara could be repurposed so that more people get to go through them at like a lower level. I think finding like underutilized parts of zones and adding new quest hubs to them and the leveling experience would be really cool. And could fill in some of those gaps that makes leveling kind of hard in like the 30s, 40s, and 50s when you're kind of struggling for where you should quest. And uh, yeah, I'd like to see like end game zones that give like, you know, gold and, and loot gear rewards and stuff that you could you could quest through new stories and new zones in the classic era and you could get like you know gear upgrades and stuff if they want to do like new five mans and uh, new raids that'd be super cool yeah I'd, I'd like to see all of it do I think that any of it will ever happen uh, it has like a 30% chance to happen it's not a very good chance but it's not outside like the realm of possibility The infamous Scarlet Monastery raid, right? We need a lot more than that, but that'd be a, that'd be a place to start. I, I I wouldn't want to see the first thing that gets added be a raid. The percentage of people that that get to experience raids compared to the people that get to experience leveling, questing, and leveling dungeons, I, I wouldn't want to see the first new thing in Classic be a raid. I think that would be a ripoff for most people. Well met. Find Bookie Harad's records. What is this? Oh, it's it's red, so let's just go ahead and drop it for now. Uh, let's see. Hey, hey, here we go. Wetlands. Yeah, okay. We have Omer's Revenge in the Wetlands level 27. Let's let's go do that. Classic Wailing Caverns, right? Wailing Caverns is basically a raid. So is Maradon. You could be in there for such a long time. It's like a five-man raid. Anything that goes over an hour and a half, I'm willing to consider it a raid. Okay. We don't need any of that stuff. Is this the one to make it to 60? Uh, not yet, so far it's 30. 
Will this be the one? I, I certainly hope so. I have good feelings about it. This is as high as we've ever gotten as far as you know, hardcore characters. So it's looking promising. That being said, uh, we, we don't really want to jinx it. Be careful. It's going to be a little bit of a long flight, guys. So I, I would understand if you wanted to like take this time to step away, get some coffee, get a snack, make a sandwich. Because, yeah, we're going to go all the way up to the wetlands. My favorite dungeon in Classic would, would have to be Shadowfin Keep. Uh, I, I love the ambience of it. I have a lot of really good memories of SFK. It was where I started to learn how to tank on my first Torn Warrior. Like, groups were kind enough to, like, let me tank and kind of give me some pointers and let me get my feet under me. And so I'll, I'll always have, like, really good memories of people who were, like, super chill and super cool. Back in vanilla, like, letting me learn how to tank when, like, I'm pretty sure I still clicked most of my abilities. So, yeah, SFK. I have, uh, Alexander, I have rank 2 up. Yeah. Yeah, we got that at level 30. I Surprisingly, you know, for me, I did remember to put it up on my bar. But thanks for checking, because a lot of times, you're right, I, I forget to put the skill ranks up. Taxi Arcus, does any profession not make sense as a hardcore player? I mean, for me, the, as I as I progress through this trying to do blacksmithing, I, I would say avoid blacksmithing. Yeah. <laughs> avoid blacksmithing. That's really the only advice I can give. Um, it takes too many mans. Yeah, enchanting you can't do. Yeah, you can do enchanting up to get like a wand. You know, you can get the greater wand, but then you have to drop enchanting. Because uh, you need blacksmithing stuff after that. And since we can't use the auction house or trade... Yeah, avoid, avoid enchanting, avoid blacksmithing in my opinion. Blacksmithing takes a lot, a lot of materials to like sufficiently level it. And you, it's so hard to level it at pace with you to like make yourself good stuff. I feel like with tailoring you can almost level it with you. Because depending on what zones you're going through, like a lot of stuff, stuff can drop cloth, but... Engineering is the hardest. You know, people have been telling me to drop blacksmithing and grab engineering. <laughs> Maybe it's just because of some of the stuff you can make. I know target dummies are a big thing in hardcore. You can make a target dummy that will basically taunt an enemy. So it's kind of like a stone claw totem that a shaman would have. And that's super cool. I liked I liked engineering for our dwarf hunter who died at level 19 because we were able to craft ammo. Crafting ammo was super clutch. And we were able to uh, make guns for ourselves, and that was pretty awesome as well. But yeah, I'm, su I'm sure like with blacksmithing, it probably gets really, really hard to actually level it up. I'd say, like, for me in the future, I, I'm probably going to take Herbalism Alchemy, or I'm just going to grab, like, Herbalism and Skinning, and I'm just going to sell everything. I'm probably not going to ever do a production profession again in Hardcore. It just doesn't seem to really make sense to do it. Unless you're really going to grind, unless you're going to go spend hours grinding copper, like, just running around in low-level areas, no kill XP from the monsters, and you're fine with just spending time grinding up your copper. Because you are going to need a ton of copper <laughs> and stones you need rough stones forever and i was like oh we're done with rough stones and i sold a bunch of them but it turns out like copper you need rough stones for a long time rich v good day to you too man i appreciate you being here Dark man, I mean, you ask people that and you'll get a different answer. I think people play a different way. I think once you hit 60, you are allowed to, by the rules of the add-on, make your character immortal, which means you can die and it doesn't matter. Do a lot of people play that way at 60? No, I don't think so. <clears throat> I think that most people who play at 60 still consider themselves a hardcore character, and I think, like, there's, like, a predominance of hardcore raids where, like, if you die in the raid, you're dead. So I think it's an option for people, you know? But I'm not sure how many people play like that. But tactical, I don't think in, in hardcore, you know, I'm gonna get to 60 and if people if people aren't happy with that, I guess they can bite me because it's a hard enough journey without worrying about having my pre-raid this from professions. <laughs> I think we have to like level set expectations for these kinds of challenge runs sometimes. 
because like yeah like it would be great to have i'd love to have the profession leveled up to be able to make all that gear but also i want to make sure that i survive and also i don't really want to sink like the dozens and dozens of hours into that because it's a long journey as it is you know if i thought i would enjoy it if i thought that me personally i'd get like the reward sensation from all the time put in i'd be like oh yes i have this as someone who doesn't really care about raiding who like i'm not I'm not really hyped to like jump into a raid where I know that I'll probably die. Since I'm doing it for the challenge of getting to 60, for me, production professions don't really make sense. Obviously, if I thought I was like super hardcore and that I was going to go on and like farm molten core on my, on my hardcore character, then I'd probably be more concerned about it. But for me right now, especially, it's like it's about the challenge of getting to 60. And then whatever happens after that will be sheer fun no matter what it is. Like if we get to have an, an end game state, in hardcore that last any amount of time, I'll just be super happy and I won't really be sweating the small stuff. It is supposed to be hard. Sometimes hard doesn't just mean that you sink more time into it or that you're super bored doing it though. You know what I mean? And like if I thought I would if I thought I would get the reward I, I would need out of it like emotionally then I would do it but it's just I, I don't think it's for me. I don't think production professions in the future are for me. And I think it's, I think sometimes you like recognize certain things about yourself and it's like best just to act on that. When like I, when I, I'm sitting here every day and I'm thinking to myself, man, I wish I just had like herbalism alchemy or I wish I just had, you know, skinning in, in herbalism. I think like feeling those things, it's probably smart for me to like act on it in the future as opposed to like falling into the same traps, you know. Heavy G, hey man. Thanks for stopping by the stream. Whitney, thanks for being here. Jason, happy Friday, man. Johnny Hoover Costco was a madhouse? I bet, man. I can't imagine. Yeah, we, we hit 30. Uh, and we made, we made a trip down to uh, Booty Bay we didn't get killed on that trip either so that was super good and now we're gonna go do uh, some low level stuff here in the wetlands we have the uh, raptor quest I believe scythe claws and razor maws mm -hmm. over at the dig site so I'm kind of hoping this won't be as dangerous as stuff we've been doing recently we can just kind of have a chill time with it that's the goal Rich V, thanks for asking, man. Yeah, he's much better today. He's got his energy back. We actually went outside and played some basketball earlier after the first stream ended, and we threw the frisbee and ball to the dogs, and uh, yeah, he's actually got his energy back, got his legs back under him today, and is doing quite well. No fevers yet this today, so... It, he's missing, like, his last main week of school, though. It's pretty awful, because uh, when he goes back to school, he's only going to have two and a half days left. How are you? And, uh, you know, he's a kid that really likes going to school and has a lot of friends that he likes to see and stuff. So I know he's going to be, like, super disappointed about that. Uh, he's in, the guy's in the keep, isn't he? Yeah, engineering guy's in the keep, right? Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. I remembered, finally. Yeah, Johnny Hoover, it was a crazy run. We, um, we, uh, we aggroed some stuff that was pretty scary. And I did learn that the Horde NPC, the Tauren, that path's down there, they're not aggressive. I, I, got, I got pretty close to them, and people were telling me they're not aggressive, and I, I wanted to believe, you know. So I tried to have some faith, and I, we got close enough to kind of discern that she was not, she was not aggressive. So we didn't have to run from any, like, PvP flag mobs or anything. Here we go, let's see. How are um, you? we have nothing. Yeah, maybe someday. Just not today. We're gonna out-level the quest eventually, you know, it's gonna go gray. A couple more levels. A couple more levels and we'll later. be through with it. The forever missing bronze tube that never was. Mm -hmm. It'd be really easy if we can go buy one off the auction house for like 50 silver, you know? Hell, I'd, I'd pay two gold for one at this point. Jason, that's a good point, man. So much wow, so little time. Yeah, we're really lucky to have a point in time when so many versions of the game are fun to play and doing well. So, like, no matter what flavor of wow you like, or no matter what flavor of wow you want to play that day, like, something is good. 
Wrath is doing pretty good for people who like that. Retail people are happy who, who like retail. So yeah, it's a great time. Let's go check our uh, our special goods vendor up here as well as maybe check and see for the bronze tube. We might as well. It'd be like, you know, free experience at this point if we can just go nab it. Johnny, have you have you Googled the uh, error code you're getting? Does it have any like specific information associated with it if you like pop it into a Google? Sometimes sometimes they're generic and it like tells you literally nothing valuable, but sometimes they're very specific. Other than that, I really can't think of uh you've uninstalled even or reinstalled. Hmm. Do you get the error before you try to log into a character, or when you go to log into a character? A missing file. But you've re but you've reinstalled. <clears throat> All I can think is like, uninstall, delete the folder directory for WoW out of, uh, out of your systems folder. Like, completely delete the folder directory, and then reinstall. Maybe there's some like remnant file hanging around, like even when you uninstall it, it doesn't delete the folder structure. So maybe some corrupted file is hanging around in the folder structure. So if you go into like program files 86, just delete the World of Warcraft file after you've uninstalled it. So run the uninstall, shift delete, like make sure you do a shift delete the uh, folder. And then do a reinstall and see if that does it. Because yeah, it sounds like maybe a corrupted file is hanging around. Uh, in the f in the folder structure that's not being overridden when you go to reinstall it. That's really all I can think of. Yeah, no problem. That's what I would do at this point. Like, I, I would shift delete the whole folder and then like, no, I'm totally starting from scratch when I go to reinstall it. Day Gaming, welcome man. How are you? Thanks for stopping by the stream. Alright, let's check our engineering supplies. I will be so happy when this quest is gray and we don't have to worry about this anymore. Yeah, because we're cause we're probably not going to find it. We, we've checked uh, probably about a dozen times. What about the special goods what dealer? Can I get for you today? Nothing cool going on right now. Somebody must have been by here recently and bought the gear because she's got she's got no gear right now. It's pretty sad. Yeah. 
keep your feet on the ground. All right, let's head down to the excavation site. Maybe we fight a few things on the way. I thought the music was low. Yep. Let me know if that's too high, guys. I have a bad habit of getting into like Stormwind or Ironforge or something and then lowering the music and then I never remember to raise it. And then eventually I'm sitting here in what sounds like almost silence and I'm like, oh yeah, the music. Wafer Juice, hello. Welcome to the stream, my man. Thanks for being here. Copper vein, uh, yeah, I mean, <laughs> we need infinite copper, so we might as well. Probably gonna have to clear this guy. Sexy arc is it's, it's probably like it could be like a regional thing. It could be anything. You know what I mean? It's just kind of like a way of speaking. I don't know. If you're talking about like calling people brother and stuff, is that, if that is that what you mean? I don't I don't have a brother either. But like I'll refer to people that way if they're like kindred spirits. You know what I mean? If that's what we're talking about, maybe I maybe I misunderstood the uh, the question. I know you phrased it, at Johnny, but I think I think he might be doing some maintenance on his WoW install right now. So I kind of. I figured I'd give my two cents, since I kind of do the same thing sometimes, if that's what we're talking about. Uh, I don't need to come up here, and I'm not sure why I am. Let's head back down and see what level these guys are stuck at. Uh, I'm hoping they're green. Maybe. Let's see. Yeah, they're going to be green now. Last time we were here, they were yellow and they were tough and uh, we were not being very safe. Yeah, Tax it's, it's just like, it's a thing. Some people say it's like part of a dialect. I'm not really sure how to explain it. I'm sure it depends on like where in the world you live and how you came up and stuff, right? Right. Um, but yeah, it's just for me when I, when I say it, I just, I'm referring to someone who I think of as like a kindred spirit, a fellow... Uh, kind of aligned in some of our interest. I don't know. It's like multifaceted. It's probably different slightly for different people.
And I find it never really helps to like overanalyze language too much. <laughs> Get yourself into a weird place when you try to over overanalyze language too much. Yeah, there you go. Yep, fellow gamer, yeah. Military, definitely. Yeah, I think for different people, it's different, you know? And when people, even when people use like the same <clears throat> manner of speaking, some of their meaning behind it is a little bit different, but generally I think it's like a similar thing. Yeah, Wafer Juice, we've done a couple of dungeons in our time. We did uh, Wailing Caverns on the, the Druid tank. We did Rage Fire Chasm on the Druid tank. And those ones were okay, but they were like lower level stuff, so they weren't too challenging. They're, they had moments that were kind of frightening. And I think generally there is a level of anxiety about putting your hardcore character into a place where someone else's decisions, or lack thereof, can get you killed. Also for me, it's like I don't want to accidentally get somebody else killed, so there's like kind of like a dual anxiety of being worried for your character, but also being worried for the other people in your group. And for some people, I'm sure they like they don't do it. On this character, we're not doing any any dungeons. We're gonna save our dungeons for when we're gilded up on the new hardcore server, and we'll we'll do those runs together with people who are playing. Ashton, that's awesome, man. Thanks for being here. I really I like when people like when they step away from WoW, but then they come back and they find they they can enjoy it in a different way. That just reminds me that the game has like so much going for it and is so multifaceted that like you can you can play a game for years for one reason like you're being a hardcore raider for years and really enjoying that and then you step away and when you come back you're like oh look you know I can enjoy it for these other reasons and enjoy these different modes of gameplay. And I think that WoW is really special in that way and it makes me happy when when people share those experiences. Because I, I definitely have changed the way that I play the game over the years too. Yeah, I used to just raid with my guild, you know, that was the main impetus I had for playing the game was to raid and play with the people that I played with. And then as that guild kind of like disintegrated over time, I found that if I wanted to engage with the game, I was going to have to do it in a different way. And I was going to have to get like different forms of enjoyment out of it. And then here we are today, we're having a blast doing hardcore. Now this is like the funnest way for me to enjoy the game. And like, you know, five years ago, I probably never would have tried a hardcore run. <laughs> Because I would have been too attached to the idea, like, I can't delete my character, you know. Uh, and now here I am. And that's really cool. LSS, what's the headpiece I'm wearing? It's a cloth headpiece that I willed into existence. Yeah. I was talking and I was saying, you know, it, it'd be really cool if we can get a some kind of headpiece. And then the next mob we killed dropped this. And it's cloth. <laughs> and it has stats we don't need. But it looks really cool on us, and, you know, it's better than nothing. I do like the headbands a lot, because a lot of the helmets in Classic Era look kind of goofy, so... Yeah. Smoke, you've been here since the Human Female Rogue? Right on, man. I appreciate you being here. Thanks for coming to the stream and hanging out with us. That's awesome. I was just gonna say, like, I bet there's something up behind us. And yeah, there are definitely enemies up behind us that we have to be aware of. And this one's kind of coming down a little bit now. Let's shift, but not too far, right? We've got enemies... On all sides now. I thought I was taking us to like a safe hill, but this is more like the hill where you go to die. If we can get some mana back before we aggro this guy, that would be ideal.
what levels have I died at? Every level I've died at has been lower than level 27. We died, the highest level we had was 26. So we've died at 26, we've died at 19, we've died at 19 again. Yeah, no, nothing this high. This is the highest level we've gotten to. So usually death has come for us anywhere between level 23 and 26, but we've had a couple level 19 deaths. I've died at level 11, I've died at level seven on a warlock. And then again at level 11 on the reroll of the warlock. Um, we've died at lots of different- I, the first paladin we rolled, I died- I killed at level 9. Uh, I died trying to fight Princess and her entourage at level 9, so it was super stupid. And we, we have died at a plethora of levels. Steven, yeah, thanks man. Yeah, 30 feels pretty good. It's like a big milestone and now I'm just like, I'm trying to go slow and, and not get us killed anytime soon. We found out today, somebody let us know there was like a Reddit post that explained some of the percentages of, of hardcore survival. And I guess only 1% of players make it to level 40. So yeah, 1% of people who attempt hardcore runs make it to level 40. So I, I don't know what level 30's percentage is. But if 40 is 1%, then, then 30 is probably not a huge percentage. Maybe like, maybe 30 or 40% we think, maybe. Get to level 30. Even that seems like it might be high, I don't know. It gets interesting, I think, because like the lower level zones are so crammed full of people. And like, especially when you create a new character, you feel like you're playing on launch night. And then if you get to this point, things start to thin out a lot. And you find that you're not seeing as many people and it's this gradual thing that happens. And I find it pretty interesting. Although I admit the world is going to feel like empty at higher levels, but the emptiness is going to have a, a meaning for us. And the emptiness is going to mean that we've made it where other people haven't. <laughs> so the emptiness is not going to necessarily feel too bad because, you know, it's like it's space that we've earned, I guess, in a way. I appreciate that, Taxi Arcus. Thank you. Gabriel, yeah, it's the it's the highest we've been. It feels really good, thank you. Yeah, yeah, thirties feeling good. I like it. It's nice to see a new number up there. And so yeah, 40. 40 is the next milestone. We just have to inch our way there very slowly and safely. And if we kinda if we keep doing what we've been doing, and you know, I haven't been like hundred percent safe, but we've been making smarter choices, and you, you guys have been helping out a lot with that. You know, if if not for you guys, uh, we we probably wouldn't have made it this far. If I if I had kept this going as like a, a solo immersive recorded series, then I don't think I'd still be alive. Yeah, it was great to get into Stranglethorn. Joseph, welcome, man. Thanks for stopping by the stream. I appreciate you being here. Yeah, Stranglethorn has been good. It's been great to step into a place that we haven't been. And uh, I don't know what other new zones are next. You know, we spent a little bit of time in South Shore. That was also new. Well, it was new on the Alliance, you know. That's why I, I guess it didn't feel super new because we've taken Horde characters into Hillsbred quite a bit. And I didn't really acknowledge when we were there that for the Alliance side, that's really the first quest that we've done out of South Shore uh, in a hardcore run. So that was also kind of new territory for us. And we actually are, we'll probably go back there soon to do some of the Naga quest, and we also, well, we have the Murloc quest first, to kill the Murlocs. Alright, that's the model that Razor Maw is done. We need the, the green ones now, I think. We're also looking for more of the clickables on the ground.
Like a profession character, yeah. I mean, I ranted a little bit ago about how I think I'm just how I think I just don't enjoy production professions. I think I'm just bad at them because I, I can't make myself enjoy the production professions for some reason. Like blacksmithing has been very challenging for me because I'm not like, I don't have a lot of internal motivation to do it, and I know there are some small payoffs that could happen over time, but I, I have trouble motivating myself to it. Uh, we're done here except for the clickable. So yeah, we got the vase. We're looking for oh the, the yeah the names don't tell us anything. Ados, Niru, Motor, and Golm. Th those tell us nothing. Uh, I have a feeling though that one of them is up top. I think we do have to go up top to find one of them specifically, and I think the rest can be down here in various places. So let's let's take a little run here up the old hill, and we'll see. The last one is up top, so one of them is up there, then we have to find the, the last one. Maybe it'll narrow down some of our uh, options down here if we grab this one up top. Probably not, but we can hope. Mm, okay, yeah we, can, uh, yeah, we can get up here. Okay, that's perfect. Well, I mean, there is one up here, but I seem to already have it. I seem to already have it. So that's weird. Um, hmm. I thought a unique one was up here. Yeah, I thought that you could find most of them below, but the one up here was unique. And apparently that's not... Yeah, they're all random, Jason, I guess. So I always thought that the one up here was not as random, that we had to come up here to find a specific one. But apparently that's not the case. Because, yeah, I, I've gotten this one already. This is either the Modir or the Golm fragment. So, yeah, let's head back down and we'll just kind of run around and see. Yeah, it seems to be completely random, which I, I've never really... I've always had to go up there, I feel like, so... The Named Mob is up there. Do we have the quest for the Named Guy right now? Not yet, I don't think, right? Ryan Wallace, thank you, man. That's super generous of you. I appreciate that. Thanks for being here. Hmm. Well, it's not over here. We'll, we'll kind of like check off these little areas one at a time. 
I'm going to stop looking at Questy and I think just kind of look where I think they are. Oh, here we go. Yeah, see, this is one and this was not even in one of the little craters. So how am I looking? This is the Eidos fragment. Jay, good afternoon, man. Thanks for stopping by the stream. I don't need to avoid these guys. It's actually a decent area to farm. They're, they're at a pretty good level where they're like they're not too challenging. Unless we pull a bunch of them, we're probably not going to get killed. So I, I shouldn't shy away from fighting a bunch of these guys right now. It's not like we have a lot of places we can go quest, you know. We really need to be level 33 or 34 before we do a lot more in Stranglethorn. And I just don't know where we're going to get those levels. I don't know where we're going to get them. If we're not going to grind them, I don't know where the levels come from. So, I shouldn't shy away from fights. Taxi Arcus, thank you, man. I appreciate that. So, I, I don't know what we're looking for exactly. Um, hmm. This is not it. So, we've, we've done this one. We've done the, the rounder, broader vase. We've clicked on the chest looking thing. This thing over here is some piece of equipment that looks really important, but it's not. Hmm. And I wonder if like when another player picks up the item if it disappears from its spot or if it kind of hangs out That I don't really know. I'm also wondering if, it, if it's not like somewhere on the ground in this little camp I've never had a lot of trouble with this quest before. I mean, I feel like sometimes it's taken a bit to find the items, but usually we find them just fine. Sep, man, thank you for being here in the stream. Yeah, Hardcore is, is pretty fun. I think everyone who's engaging with Hardcore is having a really good time. There's lots of engagement with it, so like especially at low levels, things are super busy and there's lots of players everywhere. And yeah, it's my favorite mode of WoW right now. It's the thing that I'm most engaged with, that I have the most fun with. <laughs> right, another player, yes. Yeah, we're not seeing as many other players. You know, the higher level we get, the less people we're going to see. It's kind of interesting. We spent a lot of time, you know, trying to fight for enemies and fight for named spawns and stuff, and eventually we're not going to have to fight for named enemies anymore. There aren't going to be enough people around to compete for it, so... Yeah, Sep, I can see how everyone's different. I said earlier, like, me five years ago, there's no way I would do a hardcore challenge because I'm just like, I'm not going to put time into a character and then ever delete it. And at some point, I just, I am different, I guess. Um, I played a lot of WoW for the last 20 years, so part of it's that. 
And if, it's weird because you think you couldn't get attached to a character that you know you might delete, but if it turns out for some people like the opposite is true. I get more attached to my character knowing at any moment it could die. And like I get more into the character, I care more about the character. It's it's really something. Yeah, but I, I know that it doesn't speak to everybody. Like some people bounce off of it. Um but yeah, I think the people who get sucked into it get sucked into it like me pretty hard. Maybe getting like a bigger view here would help, but I don't know that it's really going to. Now the item that was up here is not up here anymore. Hmm. This is a tricky one. You know, it's not. it doesn't matter because we'll, we'll just keep killing here for a bit. I really don't have a good place for us to go right now anyway, unless we want to go back into South Shore and we want to try the Murloc quest. But, you know, Murlocs scare me, so I'm not super excited to do that. The nearer one is a pile of dirt. Oh, tactical. That's probably crucial for me to think about. Because, yeah, I've been looking for objects. I have been looking for objects. And I, I haven't been looking for piles of dirt, so... Let me kind of re-evaluate here. Thirty-seven fifty. I don't know if I have an add-on that's going to let me see coordinates, guys. <clears throat> if we're if we're being clear. Tactical, awesome catch, man. Mm -hmm. Apparently, I do have an add-on that gives me coordinates. I don't know what add-on it is. Does the map automatically show coordinates and I played for 20 years without knowing that? Can we add this to, the, if that's true, can we add this to most embarrassing things to ever happen to you in WoW? Yeah, we can. The map will just show coordinates. Is it possible that I never understood that? Yes, it is, actually. Excellent. I guess I was looking for it to be over my mouse cursor, like I wanted the point on the map, like right where I was going to look and then I thought maybe I would see coordinates like where I was hovering. Is there an add-on that does that and that was what I was looking for? Like where I'd hover and it would just show me the coordinate right by my cursor instead of me having to look inches up. I don't think it happens to everybody, Sep, but it definitely makes sense that it happened to me. Now I can actually find these coordinates, 3750. Okay, 37, oh whoops. Okay, so yeah, somewhere down here. It says somewhere back in this corner. And we, we've kind of been back in that corner. But I'm gonna go take a closer look. I can go, <laughs> look at it this way, I'm gonna be super depressed for the rest of the day uh, that I didn't know there were coordinates right up at the top of the map. <laughs> Let's, I'm going to look at it that way because that's going to be the reality of my experience. Uh, that being said, am I going up top? No, you know, it's, it can't be up top. That being said, even now having the coordinates, I'm like, is that actually going to help me? You would think so. And yet here we are. And so that can't be the only place it can pop, you know what I mean? Because it... it if we're to trust Questy, it's marking like a bunch of different potential places. 
So my question is, you know, we have the coordinates. Is that like 100% going to pop here or am I just kind of standing here for no reason? Because, yeah, I, I'm still not seeing it. And I guess I, I shouldn't worry about it too much, but it would be really cool to get this one turned in and maybe grab the named guy since we don't have a lot of competition for the named guy right now. 3750 hardly seems like an area that I can quite, I can't even quite get my character into that exact point. You know, it, it, there's kind of a mountain side there. Jason, you kind of confirmed me that the spawns are random, yeah. That's kind of what I feel like. I don't feel like this is going to be like a, a coordinate thing, unfortunately. Now I have coordinates that I can use, like I can use the coordinates in the future for like other quests that are like more specific, but I don't think this one's going to just pop up right where, where, where it says, you know. Maybe, maybe that's a high likelihood, but if you look at that... Yeah, it would be back here, and I, for one, I can't really get back there. And for two, I don't think any quest objectives are going to spawn. Let's Okay, here we go. We're up here now. We're at 37.1, 50.2. So, yeah, I think we can rule this out for now. I feel like we can. Mm-hmm. All right, yeah, let's keep running around fighting stuff. I feel like that's probably going to be our best method. You think if I look from the top of the bridge, I'll see it? Like from up there? Do you think... Oh, do you think it's on this plateau? Like, okay, hold on. How could... How could I get to that? Do you think maybe it's up here? That looks like super dangerous. Like, why would they want me to try to get up there? I need to take the path that goes up. Uh, yeah, the path that goes up on the eastern side. Like this path here. Because I don't know that there's like a safe way to get down. I'll go up there because we have a quest to turn in anyway. I've, just, I've never done the quest like that. I've never had to go up there and then jump off of something to finish this quest. So I, I don't think that's like 100% necessary to find this objective. But I will go up there. We will scout the area and I won't be stubborn about it. And we'll see. Okay. Check by the tree when I go up. Okay. Will do. Like this tree right here. Jason, you nailed it, man. You nailed it. And I would not have looked there. I would not have looked there. So I appreciate that, man. It wasn't at 3750, but I appreciate you guys teaching me something fundamental about how the map works. I shouldn't even drink my coffee while we run up this because this is a death drop. I have to actually be careful because if I run off this, uh, I think we go splat. And that would take that would take the cake for today. That'd be more embarrassing than the coordinates thing. Uh, I, you you guys see this guy, right? Is he trying to bait us into sliding off this cliff? Because I don't appreciate that. <laughs> he was like walking precariously close. What's on your mind? Okay, here we go. Uh, we need to find... Wait, let's see. The Sar Yeah, Sarl Tooth. Okay, we saw him over here. So at least for that one, we know where to go. How are you? Keep your feet on the ground. 
Uh, nobody threw me off, thankfully. <laughs> Is that something that happens in a different version of the game? Um, Cause yeah, I, I don't want him to throw me off. He didn't throw me off yet, so... If somebody throws me off a bridge, I'm going to bubble, even if I even if I don't think I'm gonna die. Just saying. Tim, thanks for being here, man. Yeah, we got 30 today. Uh, big milestone. We stepped foot into Stranglethorn Vale for the first time. We did a little bit of stuff out of uh, South Shore. So yeah, we're getting to see some new areas, and we're getting into zones where like there aren't as many players, so we don't have to compete as much for objectives and for name guys. Like, right now we're about to go after a named raptor, and I'm really curious to see if there's anybody else waiting for him, or if it's just gonna be, like, open season on him. Let's kill every other raptor on the way first. Holly Pocket, hello. Thanks for dropping by and joining the stream. I haven't seen any other players come and go from this ramp, so I feel like we're just going to have a really easy shot at tagging this guy. And that's going to feel really different than basically any other named guy we've tried to grab, so that's pretty cool. There are some bodies up here though, so maybe someone has been up here and I just didn't see them come up. Yeah, okay, somebody was up here. Hmm, it must have been that one other player that we saw. At least there's not a mob of people or a line. That's pleasant. Let's go fight a little bit more down below and we'll, we'll kind of keep our eyes open on the ramp and if we see any other players then we'll head up here. Oh, we can actually maybe fight up in the hills here a little bit. Oh. 
What is this? No effing way. Guys, I've been talking about it for two days. I've been telling you that you, you think about what you want, you ask for what you want, you put it out into the world, you keep envisioning it very specifically what you want. And I'll admit, I've been thinking about an axe and I shouldn't have been thinking about an axe, but we've been talking about all these two-handed axes and I've been thinking about all these two-handed axes. And we got a two-handed axe. What in the actual F? Guys, you can manifest shit. If, if shit is RNG, if the universe has a chance to like manipulate RNG to give you the stuff you envision and ask for, it can happen because it's easy. RNG is easy to manipulate. It's easier to move RNG than it is to like stop a, a human from doing a thing. You know what I mean? And we asked for this RNG and we got a two-handed axe. Uh, it's an axe, so yeah, that's my fault. I should have been thinking about a sword. I should have been thinking about a hammer, but we've been talking about those epic axes. I'm, just, I'm not complaining, but I'm just like pointing out that I got exactly what, I, what I've been envisioning. I got a two-handed axe. Streamer perks. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know what to think. Can I manifest you a pepperoni pizza? No, but you can. You can. I don't think I can manifest stuff for other people. I think like you can send people vibes, but I don't know if I can manifest stuff for somebody else. I think for like manifesting stuff into your life, like you have to work really hard at that. But I do think it's possible to send people like good vibes and stuff like that. Um, yeah, I'm super stoked, obviously. Chance on hit wounds the target, causing them to I love bleeds. That's another thing about me. I love being able to put a bleed on a target. Uh, that's why I love the arms warrior. How good would this be for an arms warrior? You're stacking all those bleeds already, and then you got this. Oh, man. That's super cool. What's our axe skill? It's pretty high. We, we had that axe recently that we used to level it up. 136 out of 150. That's not bad. Tactical, you feel you've had really good luck with drops in a while? Yeah, I've, I've historically had bad luck, but what I've never done before until this playthrough is I've started asking for stuff and like thinking about it. I've never really done that before. I've always been pessimistic in the past, and I think to myself, you're never going to get anything. And I think when you think like that, when you tell yourself you're not going to get something, you are absolutely not going to get it. <laughs> absolutely. If you're sitting there telling yourself it's never going to happen, guess what? It's not going to happen. You already decided. But yeah, hey, you're probably like a more positive person than me. So like you're out there getting all those drops. And I was I was living my life thinking I was never going to get a drop. But look how this has worked out. Yeah, the DPS difference. So we can, we can compare them. But you know I'm not going to re-equip this sword no matter what happens, right? Gary, like I went about it the same way. We got a couple of bags, I think, farming Defias guys in the Northshire Abbey. And I just, I kept saying, you know, we're going to farm these guys until we get a bag. And we got at least one bag of, off of them. And I just kept thinking about them dropping a bag, you know. It sounds stupid and like that couldn't work, but I swear to God that it does. Yeah, okay, cool, cool. Let's, uh, let's smack some stuff with it. The bleed is really cool, yeah, I, and I've never seen this weapon before. Kill maim. Hmm. I see another player. They're not heading this way, so I feel like we might be safe to go down and fight a little bit. If we see them kind of head towards the hill, we will we'll double back. So I, I don't want to wait for another 5 minute respawn timer on that guy up there. I know we're getting close to him spawning back in, but I'd like to smack this guy around and maybe level up the axe skill a bit. Let's see if we ever if we ever get the bleed though. Oh, there it is. Re it's just called rend. I like that. It's just a, a straight out rend. So what I wonder is like if you were an arms warrior, would that be able to stack, or would it pick it up as like the same the same skill? Let's see. Yeah, let's see. Priest, I'll give you wisdom. There's some wisdom for you. You like that wisdom, don't you? There we go. We we ca we we kind of begged for it there, right? Casting uh, the blessing so many times. <laughs> I feel kind of dirty, like we were like begging for buffs, you know.
All right, let's head back up top. All right, here we go. I'm gonna pull him over here in case he can like call out for help or anything weird like that. Yeah, I'd say the new weapon's doing pretty well. I mean, we're not even max skill level with it yet, so... Yeah. Taxiarchus, I have to keep thinking about weapons and gear. I have to start thinking about weapons and gear more. Like, more more weapons, more gear, I have to start, like, getting it into my head. And next time, next time we want a mace or a sword. Yep, yeah, I'm gonna start asking right now. Preferably we get it when we're in, like, a level 30 area, you know? And that can be, like, our next upgrade. So if we start thinking about it now, we can we can get something to drop next time we're in like a level 30 area. I, I think like my limited experience though I've gotten so many axes that it's so much easier for me to like project what it feels like to get an axe to drop than it is to like project what it feels like to get any other weapon to drop so I think that's where I'm struggling and I think that's why we got this axe <laughs> instead of a sword or mace. Yeah, David, we got a blue axe. We got uh, Kill Mame. Pretty good. It's level 21, but you know, the, the sword we had was level 19. So, pretty big upgrade. It's got, it's got a rend that it can crit or that it can hit for 100 damage over 30 seconds. So, that's pretty cool. And yeah, I'm like super stoked about it. But I'm already thinking about like, okay, let's keep, let's keep it up. You know, let's keep the drops coming in. I didn't really want to. That being said, I feel like we could probably take them. Let's stun this guy for a minute.
tactical. Am I gonna take the talent for blessing of blessing of kings in the prot tree? Um, probably not, unless it's like right in the first tier. But I haven't really looked at the prot tree at all. I'm assuming it's like, yeah, pretty far down, huh? Have to spend eleven eleven points to get it. Hmm. I mean, we could, but what else are we getting to get there? We're not going to grab... Re we, we wouldn't grab readout. That wouldn't help us. Improved divorce, devotion aura would help us slightly, like passively. Chance to hit would be good. Toughness would not be bad. Hmm. But then, like, what are we giving up? You know what I mean? What are we giving up by not spending those points over in the retribution tree? This guy's level 22? That's a little bit weird. Everything else has been like level 27. Like, I feel like I could do without these points here. Like, one, two, three, four. I don't need those. Five, I don't need that. And I and I don't need this last point, that's six. We we'll probably respec later, yeah. I just wonder if it, if that's something that I should grab later, or if it's worth it to grab it now, if we should get into vengeance first. Because, yeah, if I start spending points uh, now in protection, we could grab Devotion Aura. That's going to keep us alive a lot longer. I like the chance to hit, especially with a two-handed weapon. When a two-handed weapon misses, it just feels super bad. you got a long wait time until you swing again. So 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. Or 9, 10. I think I might just go into toughness for the all-around help all the time, you know. Okay, I could go up here. We can kind of be talking about this as we go. I'll think about it. Yeah, I don't have a lot of stuff in the in the ret tree that I'm super excited about. Except for obviously just like getting down. The last thing I want to do is I want to get vengeance and I need to get two-handed weapon spec. So I feel like we have to prioritize at least two-handed weapon spec first. That's kind of what I feel like. I don't want repentance. <laughs> yeah, not while... I don't know if I need this while leveling. Maybe, maybe. It's only humanoids, right? So, like, the place I would need repentance would be, like, the worst places in the game are, like, the Plague Lands, okay? So, in the Plague Lands, that's, like, a bunch of undead. If this worked on undead, I would say, yeah, definitely I need this. But I'm, I'm kind of thinking, like, is that going to help me in reality? And God, what a horrible last talent point for retribution. What are the other ones? Holy Shield seems pretty cool for protection. And Holy Shock for Holy seems pretty good. I feel like Retribution kind of gets the short end of the stick here for its last talent point. Yeah. I feel like that's no good. How are you? Uh, leather with Stamina we don't need. Off with you. Yeah, we, we're not going to grab wall leveling. Yeah, there was no way I was going to go down and get it. The very last thing that I really want, like super bad, is two-handed spec. And obviously, like eventually finishing off Vengeance is going to be necessary. So, yeah, we'll kind of, we'll play it out for now. We got a while before we have another talent point to worry about, you know. Okay, so with all of this stuff done, you know, that begs the question, what in the world do we do, what do we do now? You know, where do we go? Uh, let, oh, Refuge Point kind of opened up a little bit, but I bet that's all high, yeah, it's high level stuff. Northfold Manor. Level 31. Okay, so that's something that maybe we can do soon. Over in Hillsbred... Down the coast. Yeah, we can grab down the coast. This might be really the only thing we're at level with, right? Except for... Oh, the, the Dwarven Fleet. Where is this at? Um, I don't know where that one is. I thought it was right up here, but I don't, I don't see a marker. Let's take a look. Oh, he just wants a beer. Okay, he just wants to have a little drink. He, he's not even asking us to go do anything yet. Okay, okay. Yeah, sure. L let's get him the drink. We've, we've waited so long, you know. He's probably pretty thirsty at this point. We can, we can definitely go do that. 
And then there's a follow-up that we might be able to do. Is it Murlocs up the coast, or is it Ghost and Undead, or is it a little bit of both? If we go north up the coast. Yeah, David, the employees at Blizzard loved Beer Quest too, but a little bit too much. They were doing Beer Quest like in real life all the time while trying to make a, you know, a AAA game. <laughs> yeah, they liked beer and poop, yeah. That sounds about right, yep. I think the one follows the other, you know. There are murlocs up there, like, as part of this, but I think once we get onto the boats, I think the boats have, like, these, these undead guys that turn you into an undead. And then maybe your stats are reduced. Like, I think we're going to have, like, reduced stat stuff going on, which is going to be a little bit annoying for us. I think it's physical stat reduction. Either way, it's going to be, it's going to be painful. The ghost marines, right, Dawson? Are they ghost marines? They're not space marines, obviously. Yep, that's exactly what I think it is. Yeah, they're going to turn us into an undead. We're going to get like a reduced like attack or reduced something or another. I don't remember if being an undead means that we have uh, we don't have to worry about our breathing underwater. I don't know if that's like a, a side effect that kind of helps us. That part I don't recall. But yeah, it probably there's probably nothing that helps us. Why would they? Why would there be a side effect that helped us? Right. Looking for something specific? Be careful. I'm not sure that I've ever quested here post-Cataclysm now that I really think about it. If I did, it would have been on the human warrior that we ran a couple years ago through like old world content and I don't remember that at all. The raptor eggs tactical, you know, I thought about you when I sold those raptor eggs and I, I don't even have the recipe yet, do I? I know I can't make them yet, even if I do. Um, yeah, tasty omelet 130. Is this for raptor eggs? Right now, right now I have nothing to cook. Yeah. Uh, we'll get murloc fins when we fight the murlocs, so... Maybe that will be the time to level that up a little bit. I'll get the eggs back. Go with honor, friend. Just in case that recipe, we can actually unlock it. What 
can I do for you? What's on your mind? Uh, this guy needs flagon of dwarven honey mead. Save travels. Then he will tell us his tale of woe, and then we'll head to the north. For you. Mm -hmm. For the alliance. Cursed sailors, cursed marines, and Snellig's snuffbox. Okay. So yeah, we're we're heading up the coast here. We can do this, I think. It's level twenty nine. We're level thirty. We can go carefully and just not over pull. Uh, the snuff box, I think I remember exactly where it's at. We can get through a break in the hull. There's a break in the hull. And we I think we can kind of swim right in and grab it and swim out. We might have to fight a couple guys. Uh, this one shouldn't be too hard if, if we're careful. Dawson, I'm glad you dig it. Yeah, I try to keep the music and the ambient noise cranked up. Sometimes we get into Stormwind City and I turn the music down and I forget to turn it back up. But yeah, I try to keep it up pretty high so that it kind of takes the forefront. I think it really helps you just kind of relax and sink into things. Cryonish, I'm, I'm kind of leveling cooking with about the same enthusiasm and tenacity as I level most professions that are not gathering professions, which is to say that it's behind. It's, it's behind, yeah. I've never been a very good crafter, and I've never said otherwise. Ah, uh, yeah, this is kind of maybe where we need to be for the... Ah, uh, well, maybe not. Yeah, yeah, it's down here, but how do I, how do I pull these guys in a manner that, uh... I guess I just kind of come in here and see who will follow me out. Let's grab him with an exorcism. I don't really want first mate Snellig. Uh, if I could not do that, that would be cool. Uh, apparently we might not have a choice. Do I need the first mate? Not, ri not right. Oh, he has the stuff box. Okay, I thought the stuff box was an item we picked up. He has it. He's holding it. I have to kill him. This is the whole point. Now, for some reason, I thought it was a box that we clicked. I knew where it was, but not what it was. That's that's really interesting. He's disarming us, which is super bad, as you can imagine. But ultimately, he wasn't really much of a challenge. Yeah. There we go. That's the hardest part done. Now we just have to kind of be careful. Tactical, there are murlocs out here as well. Yeah, they're, they're swimming. So, oh, look, we're an undead. <laughs> we have to be uh, kind of careful. Uh, let's see. Yeah, we don't. We're undead, but we don't get the breathing bonus. Yeah, absolutely confirmed that we don't get the breathing bonus, so we can't be underwater. We have to get up here onto the boat. Uh, how are we gonna do this? It's a curse, so we can't. We can't get rid of it.
I don't like any of the angles I'm getting right now. I don't like that I seem to be close to the guys underneath us. I'm kind of worried about them aggroing from below. I don't know if they can do that or not, but it's kind of a concern I have right now. Okay, they don't seem to be aggroing us from below, so that's good. Okay, we aggroed two of them. I didn't really see that as something that was going to happen, but it did. And I think we're okay. We don't really have as much mana as I would like to have for this. But yeah, we're going to have to heal here, obviously. I I'd really rather not use the last mana potion we have. I'd rather just kind of hold on to that and see how this goes. Should just be able to auto attack him to death if we need to. I'm gonna keep I'm gonna keep strength up. Oh seal of wisdom? No, I don't I think we're fine with what we're doing. Yeah, we'd have more mana maybe, but I think we're fine. I'd rather have more more power to kill things and just drink a little bit more if we have to. Then change our seal. I mean we're expecting the seal of command, so I'm just gonna keep using this. And honestly, I don't think we have seal of wisdom yet, do we? Uh, no, we have Seal of Light. Seal of Light could help us stay alive, but no, no Seal of Wisdom. Alex, welcome back, man. Thanks for being here. We, we got a blue axe. Yeah. Alright, so, yeah, I don't really want to fight below deck, okay? That's, yeah. Let's check out the deck over here on this other ship and see if maybe there's some stuff that's a little bit safer to fight than swimming underwater. I, I don't want to fight underwater, I don't want to die 
to the breath meter. I don't want to worry about getting trapped under there. So, yeah. And this guy looks like he just cleared this whole thing. So, yeah. There's nothing over here. Mm. That's disgusting. Okay. Alright. So, maybe we pull them to the surface from the water and we fight them back on the surface. Because, yeah. Two boats. You know. Not, not enough in this case. To get us everything we need. Unless we want to go underwater. Which I don't. How can I pull these guys out? Probably through a window over here. Ah, uh, or not. Okay. Yeah, this is gonna absolutely suck. Mm-hmm. Maybe I can grab this guy with like an exorcism and then just hope- Oh, he's gonna pull everything, isn't he? Oh no, he came- Somehow he got out, he didn't pull anybody. This is probably not like super safe. Yeah. Hmm. Okay. So, who next? There's two of them grouped up there. I, I don't want to fight two of them. Like, at the same time, if I can avoid it. Yeah, there's the two guys. I, I don't want to pull the named guy again. I feel like that's kind of wasteful. Can I, can I go in here? I, I can't I can't see enough to determine if anything is safe. Mm-hmm. I, I do have a choice. I can be super patient and I can wait for respawns, you know? Like, there's a choice. You know what I mean? I know it's like it's not necessarily a great choice, but there is a choice. I mean, we can, we can hang out up here and eventually we're going to get what we need, you know? The cursed sailors were up here. They were they were filling the deck, man. They were just up here like two seconds ago. We we already have nine of them dead. So we haven't we pulled one from below and that's it. I I can find them above. I just would need to be patient. Now, granted, we can maybe snag some of them from below, but to be fair, we killed a bunch of them up top. So they spawn in randomly. It's not just sailors below and marines above. That's not how it works. They spawn in. Ra they share spawn points. So yeah, that's how it works. Uh, can I sneak in down here? We got this two pull, and I just, I don't want it, but let's grab it anyway. Sometimes you, uh, you take what you get. Let's just bounce here now for a minute and make sure we take, like, m the most damage we can to these guys, yeah. That's a good idea, too. Okay, yeah, let's go ahead and heal it up. Yeah, I, th I think it's completely random. You you might come here and you might find only marines on deck. That's totally something that could happen, but it's just randomized. Uh, let's head back to the land. We need to drink our mana back. Pull the third guy just for fun. Nah, no thanks. Not, not gonna happen. We got a couple guys back up. Up top, these are going to be the last two we need if we can get up there for them, and then maybe we'll check the other the other boat for Marines. Blood Moon, thank you. Thank you for being here. And yeah, we hit level 30. It's pretty awesome. Such a great milestone. We also learned today that only 1% of hardcore players get to level 40. So 40 is our next, because once we're at 40, we're in the 1%. And uh, it's probably the only ever time, only time I'll ever be in the 1% of anything. So I'm kind of cautiously excited about working our way towards 40 very slowly. But yeah, 30 is a great milestone. It's, it's been you guys helping me out and like kind of keeping me safe that has allowed us to make it this far. Because on my own, I probably would have gotten this character killed already. Out of some combination of like impatience, stubbornness, and stupidity, 
Uh, somehow I probably would have gotten the character killed on my own. But you guys have definitely helped me keep it alive. I feel optimistic about it, yeah. I feel like if we keep going at the pace we have been and trying to make the smart decisions that we can do it. Because of the floating like health bars, this area looks super scary, but it's not. They're below deck and they, they can't aggro us apparently. But when I'm looking at this area, you know, it, it, it unsettles me. I, I know they're below us, but I still can't help but be unsettled. Shay, thanks for being here. Yeah, we got level 30 this morning. Miles says, I'm sure I speak for all when I say we've been having a blast. Grats on 30 and your first blue. Miles, thank you so much, man. That's super generous of you. Yeah, the blue is amazing. It's so good to like hit, we hit 30 and we got the blue. Like, what kind of day is that? Who has a day like that in hardcore? That's not your typical day, but that's what we had. Yeah, it's been a great day. My favorite zone in WoW? Uh, it'd probably be Mulgor. I always think about Mulgor and how beautiful it is. Also, it was the first zone that I ever ran a character around on. Other than that, Ashenvale. Ashenvale is just absolutely gorgeous, and the music there is really good. I have lots of favorite zones. It would be easier to name like the few zones that I don't like very much. There's only a few of them. Duratar, Darkshore... And I'm not, I'm not partial to anywhere that looks like the surface of the moon. So, like, places like the Burning Steps really depress me after a while. Those are not my favorite places to be, but yeah, I like most zones. But I do have a couple favorites. Uh, we could probably pull these guys out. Let's go for him. Yeah, Blood Moon, we definitely talked about that. And the problem I realized that I had been thinking about axes because we were think we were talking about all the axes we've had drop, and I've only ever had blue and purple axes drop, realistically. So when I was thinking about getting something to drop, I did think axe, axe, and I should have been thinking sword or mace, but I I'm not complaining, but... In the future, I know I have to just be a little bit more specific. And I have to stop thinking about axes. <laughs> Otherwise, we're just going to get axes. Which we, we don't have the... Uh, we don't have the passives for axes. We, we have mace and sword, so I need to start thinking about that. Shay, yeah, the barons are amazing. We, we spent so much time in the barons recently, and I, I never got tired of it. We took the Torrid Druid through the barons, we took the Troll Mage through the barons, and I think some people got sick of it, but I never got sick of it. Because, yeah, the barons is amazing. It's, it's one of the most immersive places in the game where you can just get really sucked in in the barrens and you just realize like how expansive and vast it is. It feels really good. Blood Moon, we found this down at the excavation site. We were just uh, doing some quests down here, killing some raptors, and then there it was. Yeah, Tim, I like axes, but humans want maces and swords apparently. I like, I like the axes. For a long time, I forgot that paladins were even able to equip axes. For some reason, I thought paladins were confined to maces and swords, but they're not. And Tim, welcome to the stream, man. Thanks for being here. I appreciate it. I hope you're doing well today. You can kill a few murlocs. Nasty murlocs. I don't even think we get kill XP from these guys anymore. Maybe they'll drop an epic, though. Some murloc fins, which we actually we actually need for cooking, so... 
Maybe, maybe dropping a couple more of these guys would be okay. We can make some buff food. Buffalo Bill, thank you. Thank you for being here. Dude, lurk all you want, man. I, I definitely... Yeah, lurk. I love it. I love that you're just here. I get that, you know, you can't be, like, active when you're at work often and stuff, you know. Sometimes work's gotta get done. It is Friday. My week has been so messy with my boy being so sick all week that like I have to remind myself of what day it is because we've had zero routine this week. He hasn't gone to school, which like really affects my routine and how I start my day and it's just been it's been a mess. But we are back to almost normal today and I think like next week is his last week of school. So <laughs> You know, then we'll have a different routine we'll get to work out. It's going to be fun time. When he's out of school, it's like less restrictive because, uh, you know, I don't have to take him in, pick him up. And the, the time that we do spend together can be spent with us actually doing stuff and not like us in the car getting to places we have to be. Let's go turn this one in. I'm not done with ESO, Buffalo Bill. I'm really trying to work out a schedule for myself. And like I said, this week has been like really, really messy for me. I'm trying to work out a schedule so I can keep ESO going. And I want to keep uh, the Tauren Warrior immersive vids going. So like ideally, I would drop a Tauren video, an ESO video, and then we do some streaming. In a given day, I'd have like two streams at least. And we'd have two videos go up that were the immersive type. That's kind of my plan is to get back on a schedule here in the coming week where I can do ESO. Wrath of the Lich King, and then have a couple streams of Vanilla Hardcore. D4, Amy? <laughs> uh, D4, I'm probably not going to stream much of. I kind of contemplated trying an immersive run of D4, just a different class, because I heard that the Druid class is like particularly heinous and not fun at low levels. And I can admit to being a little bit bored on the Druid, and a little bit bored with D4 in general. But I did contemplate just trying to do like a solo immersive recording series, but with so much else going on, I don't think I'm going to touch D4 right now for a little bit. I have to think about it. I kind of like the evening D4 streams, but uh, I, I really have to think if it's a game I'm going to spend a lot more time in. Maybe if I do another stream of D4, we try a different class, because I think that like maybe the Druid just isn't for me. Buffalo Bill, thank you, man. Welcome. I appreciate that. Now you're one of us and you're stuck here permanently now. So, yeah. Thank you. Uh, let's see. I didn't turn the quest in at all. No, I just ran inside. And didn't do anything. Hey there. Uh, what's the next part and can we actually do it? Get the key from Captain Helidor. Use the key to open the lockbox. Is this back in the same spot we were just at? Or is this going to be somewhere else? Um, he, he didn't really say. Hmm. My old captain is still in my dreams. I know he walks my doomed ship, the Intrepid. Get the key from him. Use it to open the Intrepid strongbox. It's the same ship, yeah. That's what I thought, but ooh. It's weird that it, it didn't... Oh, it did mark it, Robert. You just can't see. You can't see, because you're old, and you probably need new glasses. Or a monitor that's bigger than 27 inches, which, like, do they make many monitors bigger than 27 inches? I don't know. It feels like it'd be too big. It's the second ship. Yeah. Okay. Hmm. 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 We could probably go do that really quick. Yes, Tim, exactly. D4 is pretty. And that's kind of how I felt about it. Like it's, it has great animations, great graphics. The voice acting is top notch. Um, the story did not resonate with me. In fact, there were things that were off-putting about the way the story was going that I, I really didn't like. And I like, because I, like I thought I was going to be excited for the story. I thought this is going to be a campaign playthrough. I want to see the campaign. And then as things about the campaign kind of rubbed me the wrong way. I uh, have kind of fallen off of it. Things I don't like about the campaign quest, like you have lots of main quests and they're not linear. So you can jump around from like a few different main quests. And with level scaling, there's no coherency to the story. You're just doing these like, everything that's a main quest is like really a side story it feels like. And you're stuck trying to figure out like what's my actual flow of questing. And the truth is that it doesn't matter. The devs don't care what order you do stuff in. 
because they've basically admitted that the campaign and stuff just exists to drive you up in the levels to get you into the end game stuff. So I, I'm just like, I haven't been super thrilled with the way that the campaign plays out. I haven't been super thrilled with the stuff going on in the main. Once we once we killed the girl's mom, right in front of her, instead of like Lilith doing it, we did it, and then they, the story wanted us to like escort her around, like act as some kind of like parental figure, and now we're supposed to dig the girl's mom up and try necromancy on her to learn something. I'm like, this is not this is not good. <laughs> this story does not feel right. Something is rubbing me the wrong way. We're, we're escorting a, a, a girl around whose like age and maturity level has kind of been left nefarious by the writers and I don't really appreciate that. And then we kill the girl's mom and then we're kind of acting as a father figure which seems kind of disgusting even though we had to kill the mom like it just we should just keep our distance and like go our separate ways at that point. But now we're like embroiled and we're about to do this necromancy stuff and I was like nope. Nope. I I'm out. That's kind of how I felt <laughs> about the story. I felt you too, David, in the fact that like I kept feeling you, like I just did not like that. I just didn't like it. <laughs> so they shouldn't have had us kill the mom. They should have had Lilith pop back in and do something to kill the mom, and then I would have felt cleaner. And then I don't like the whole like ambiguous younger girl and then you're her guardian or something. Like does she have a nanny somewhere we can drop her off at or what's exactly going on? Why are we putting this person in danger? Why are we helping them do necromancy to raise their dead mother? It just, it just didn't, it just didn't make sense. And I, I don't really know if I was ever going to like it. Yeah, Tim, all the campaign is level scale. And the stupid thing is they keep saying, they put the level of the quest on the quest. Why the hell are you putting the level on the quest when the quest is always going to be whatever level I am? I kept checking them, you know, I'm like, oh, it's at level with us. Oh, it's at level. Oh, it's at level because every single thing in the game is always going to be at level with us. Why are there character levels? Why are there quest levels if none of it matters? And so for an RPG, I just didn't, I don't like, I don't like level scaling. Jittery, what add-ons do I use? Very few. We use the immersion add-on. Uh, there's somebody below. I'm worried about them. Star, Star Stream. Okay, I thought it was Star Stream, like good Transformers reference. Uh, we use Immersion for the quest text. We use Questy for quest help. We use Bagnon and Leatrix Plus. Bagnon is this, and the Leatrix Plus does a couple of different things for us. It automatically vendors junk. It repairs us automatically when we talk to a repair person. And now I've also gotten it with some of your guys' help to get it to do this to the quest log. So the quest log looks a little bit cleaner than it does in classic era like if i go in here and i do enhanced quest log off that's the original quest log and then with leatrix plus i started using this today i think it was alex that let me know uh, and yeah so now now we have this which i think looks a lot better Is this guy going to be below Dex? Am I, am I probably approaching this a little bit wrong, aren't I? I kind of thought he'd be standing up top. But now I'm starting to think that he's going to be below deck. Which is going to make it a, a little bit more challenging. Okay, we got we got limited breath here. Let's... Just, oh, did I aggro? No, I didn't aggro. Somebody else aggroed. I don't like this quest. Let me just say that. And I'm not seeing this guy. He hasn't respawned. Does he respawn up or down? Is he is he in the water or is he up top on the deck? Because I, I remember him being up top, up top on the deck, kind of. I don't remember. He is above deck. Okay. Thank you for that. I appreciate that. Crayonish, thank you. We will uh, we'll clear the deck then. Will you ever play Wrath of the Lich King? Jittery asked. Yeah, Jittery, I, I played Wrath yesterday, and I, I actually put up a video today of the Tauren Warrior in Northrend. So yeah, I'm, I'm continuing with the Tauren Warrior playthrough. And I put up a vid yesterday, the day before yesterday, and I think I dropped one this morning. So yeah, I'm still playing Wrath, just not as much. 
And I'm mainly focused on doing the stuff in Northrend on the Horde side because I haven't read those quests yet. And that's, uh, that's primarily what I want to do with Wrath right now. Yeah, that's okay. Yeah, I've been doing a lot of streaming, but I am trying to post uh, a couple of the immersive videos, at least one a day. Now, that being said, my, my week has been kind of a mess this week, so this week has kind of been just shot down. And I'm just lucky to be able to have done as much as I did this week. But yeah, as we go into next week, I, I plan to get at least one of the Warrior videos up, and I'm going to continue the ESO playthrough as an immersive playthrough. So we'll try to do like two old school immersive videos, and then we'll do one or two streams a day, depending on like the length of the stream and what else I got going on. Camp here? Yeah, I think I will camp here and we'll just kind of fight stuff, because I haven't seen the body, and the fact that I haven't seen the body means he should be coming back in the next couple minutes. At this level, we don't have a lot of competition right now. That's kind of the fortunate thing about getting into the level 30s, is that, like, yeah, there's less players, there's less competition. And there's our man. That was perfect timing. Yeah, I couldn't have timed it any perfecter. If I had scripted it out myself, it was, it was perfect, yeah. Perfecter is not a word, so don't go out into the world and use that one, okay? Mm -mm. Now we need to open the crate, right? So I'm not done here yet. We need to we need to mana up, we need to heal up, and we have to go below now to the other end of the ship and find the crate. Then we'll be done with this one. Well, uh, yeah, maybe we're not getting in quite as easily as I thought. Whitney, I never mind you lurking. Yeah, feel free to lurk. Absolutely. Studying is important, but big biceps is importanter. I, I don't know. <laughs> I'm not sure about that. People might have different opinions depending on how important their biceps are to them. Uh, it's not on this level, so is it below? And can I get below safely? I don't think so. Don't do a guzu here. I don't know what a guzu is. Is that, is that, a, is that a food? Is it like a yoga pose? Downward facing guzu? I'm just not sure. Kill character for content. Do people kill their character? Dude, <laughs> let me tell you this. If I kill this character, I'm going to be getting less content. <laughs> like, how do I kill? Because I don't have like, I don't have a clips channel. I don't care. You know what I mean? If I die, it's going to really suck. It's not going to be content. <laughs> it's not going to be made into content. It's not going to be content. It's going to be me dead. And uh, that's going to be really depressing for me. So... I am not going to die. He's a Danish WoW streamer. Okay, well that's cool. I mean, if that's what you like to do, I, I think it's disingenuous and stupid. <laughs> but that's just me. I'm just one person, you know. I I'm entitled to my opinion, but I'm not entitled to have it be fact. He killed his level 60 warlock. Cool. Yeah. I think if you're level 60 and you're done with the journey, or you needed content, you're that desperate, you killed your character. I mean, if that's your thing, then that's fine. You'll be known for that, though, you know what I mean? Obviously, you know him for that, so... And I don't know if to you if that makes his content more or less appealing, really. Because everyone's different in, like, the kind of content they like. We had we had an entry pl place right here. We could have got right out, right in and right out. Let's let's go this way. Yeah, we could have came right over here. Rhea, hello, welcome to the stream. Yeah, we hit thirty earlier this morning. We also, 
got a blue axe while killing raptors. So <laughs> that was also pretty awesome. Yeah. It's been a really good day for us. I say that and like, you know, I, I don't think we're going to die. I shouldn't say that, but it's been a, it's been a really good day. I'm going to say it anyway, because it's been true. It's been an awesome day for us. It's thanks to you guys being here that I'm still alive, so... I have to always acknowledge that. I, I can say we're having a good day. If we're having a good day, yeah. And that's okay. If I if that means we're jinxing it, that's fine. I'll I'll deal with the consequences because I'm I'm gonna I'm gonna say I'm having a good day if I'm having a good day. If I feel positivity, I'm gonna put it out there into the world and if that gets me some kind of backlash, I'll just deal with it. I think the key is to like to have a good day, but not to let it go to your head where you start making like abrupt or rash choices. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, I could run through this whole camp of murlocs, but I'm not about to do that, because this, uh, this priest just did it. <laughs> so, yeah. He was having a good day too until that happened. I know I'm, I'm killing a name mob I don't need, but he was the clearest path that I saw. So that's that's what I went for. It's, I'm not doing it maliciously, but he was the clear path that I saw. The next step is fun? Okay. You say fun, uh, and I could read into that a lot of different ways because what's fun for some people is the thing that almost gets me killed. That might not be as fun for me. You say that it might not be too hard with that axe. Yeah, I mean, it's a little bit of an upgrade over what we have, but... You know. Ivan, thank you for being here. I appreciate you stopping by the stream. Yeah, we started, I think it was six days ago, and it's been a great time. And it's probably why the character's still alive. You guys have done a lot to help me, so. Exodus, hello. All right, let's turn this one in. How are ya? I can't lift the curse from the eye of Palith. The eyes were crafted by human priests, so you'll have to go to Stormwind to find someone who can help you. Speak with Archbishop, <laughs> Archbishop Benedictus. We won't slip on that one. We won't slip on Bishop and Benedictus. I don't know what word that would have formed. A couple of curse words, probably. Alright, that one takes us all the way back to Stormwind. Point Madness. We're still rocking the Paladin, yeah. You think this is the one that'll make it all the way? Are you just trying to curse us? Is that is that the plan, my men? So we're done here for now. You know, we don't have really anything else to do besides go to Stormwind, turn that breadcrumb in, come back, and then maybe do a little bit more. Yes. Yes, you are trying to curse us, or yes, you do think it'll be the one. <laughs> a little bit of column A, a little bit of column B, right? Uh, the bronze tube, do we check for the bronze tube again? We could. We could vendor. Well met. You lost Take a 46 that. priest. Everyone needs to feel your pain. <laughs> That's one way of looking at it, man. I'm sure you don't really feel that way. You probably just feel that way right now, you know. What I do when I lose a character is I get Arku. <laughs> yeah. That was a close one. <laughs> Benna what? Arku and Benna what? Are you sure you don't want that one back? I did want that one back immediately. 
<laughs> I can't Hello. even say anything else to be funny off of that, because anything I say to be funny off of that is just going to be super inappropriate. Uh, I don't need this. Oh, wait. No, I do. Robert, that's a quest item, I think. Maybe you do need that. They don't want the item. Uh, the murloc fins we need to keep. The slimy scales we can drop. The eyes we can drop. The eggs we hold. The fish we can sell. Uh, the soothing bisque, I could be using that as buff food. That would be smart. The offhand item I don't need. And I think that's basically all we can do. Okay. All right. Guys, it's been a really great time. I've had a really awesome day. We have had a couple milestones. We got our first blue weapon. We got level 30, and I still feel like we're doing really good. We are almost level 31. The level 30 went by really quick, but I think that I am going to have to stop here for today. Uh, I might get on later for an evening stream. And if I do, it'll be more vanilla hardcore, so we'll see. I'm not 100%. Um, did I not check the bronze tube tactical? I meant to, and then maybe I just got totally distracted. We'll check it. We'll check it. Just for you, Matt. I'll stop my outro. And I'll check for the browns too. Mm -hmm. That way you'll, you won't ever be able to say that I didn't try on this quest, you know? You could still say that, but you probably won't. Good day to you. Uh, yeah, let's see. It's not here, and we knew that. <laughs> Alright guys, thank you so much for being here. I really do appreciate all the support on this run. It's been a fantastic time. I hope you guys have a good rest of your day, whether it's morning, evening, afternoon for you, wherever you're at. As always, take care of yourselves out there and take care of each other. And we will see you back here again very soon. Bye for now.